Welcome back to Photoshop Basics. On PSD Touch Plus, I'm Martin Perhiniak. In this episode, we are going to learn how to work with layers. In this example, I have three photographs and I would like to arrange them and name them properly, similar to this description I have on the Stone Edge photograph. On the Layers panel here on the right, you see all the elements that are used in this Photoshop document and you can easily change the size of the thumbnails by right clicking on them and you can choose small, medium, large or no thumbnails. I usually use small thumbnails when I have lots of layers in one Photoshop document. You can easily rename these layers just to make it more organized by double clicking on the name of the layer and rename it I will call this River Avon which is in Bath in UK. You can use the move tool to move layers and you will always move the layer that you select from the layers panel. So for example now I selected River Avon with this bridge and if I use the move tool which is the first tool in the toolbar I can easily move this layer around. But as you can see this other photographs is in front of the river image because that is on top of the layer structure. So if I now click on River Avon and move it up on top of the other layers then it will be on top of all the other layers. If I move it behind Stonehenge layer then it will be behind that photograph as well. You can turn on and off the visibility of layers by these little eye icons. So I turn on and off the Stonehenge layer and if you want to see only one layer at a time you can alt click on one of these eye icons to see only that layer and then alt click again on the eye icon will show all the others. You can also use opacity for layers if you want to make a layer semi-transparent you can click on the name opacity and then drag left or right to change the opacity the percentage and as you can see if I set it somewhere in the middle it will be semi-transparent. So now I can see through the Stonehenge photograph and see partly the bridge photograph underneath it. If you want to place another photograph into this document you can use mini bridge or bridge and just drag and drop that new photograph onto the image. So for example I would like to use this cathedral photograph I can easily drop it from mini bridge into the document. I can resize it it's always good to press and hold shift key while you are resizing uh, by dragging one of the corner points just to make sure that you don't stretch your image and then this is going to be also in the document as a new layer. If you want to delete a layer you just simply press backspace from the keyboard. If you want to create a new layer without any content on it you can also use this option which is create a new layer. This is going to be an empty layer with no content at all. But you can use the brush tool for example to draw on that layer and that will appear in the little thumbnail as well for the layer. I just delete this as well because I don't need that one. Well, what is really important how to resize images. So I just change back the opacity to 100 for the Stonehenge image and I show you how can you resize a layer. The best way to do that is to go to edit free transform and that gives you a bounding box around the image as you can see and if you click on one of the corner points and start dragging it you can make it smaller or larger but make sure that you press down the shift key while you are dragging it if you don't want to stretch your image. When you are happy with the resize you can press enter or return on the keyboard. I would like to resize the other two photographs so I select now both of them from the layers panel and I then go to edit free transform which is command or control T. I will use this a lot so I will only say 
I use free transform, but I will use it from the keyboard shortcut. And now I can resize them at the same time. And I also press down the shift key just to make sure that I don't stretch them. And when I'm happy with my resize, I just press return again. I would like to also create these little titles for each photograph. And I would like to also organize my layers just to make sure that I will quickly and easily find them whenever I need to make changes. So first of all, I would like to put the Stonehenge title together with that black background, which is a separate vector shape layer, a little bit to the right of this photograph. So I use the move tool and I move it to the right like this. Then I would like to also select the photograph itself. So I select that one. Now three layers are selected and I go to layer and I choose group layers. This is also a useful keyboard shortcut, control command G. So I select that, that will create a layer group and we can name this layer group Stonehenge. Now next time if I want to move these layers, I just simply need to select the group and I can move them all together. But I still have the possibility to move them separately or change them if I open this group with that little arrow on the left to it. So grouping layers just makes it easier to keep your layers more organized and to work faster and more efficient. Now I would like to also have a description or title for the other two photographs. First I move them in place. I will move River Avon here on the right and this Roman bath to the left. And I select the title and the shape layer together. And now I will duplicate these layers by holding down the Alt key or Option key and dragging them up or down in the layers panel, I can create quickly two duplicates and then I can use my move tool and move it down here onto the other image. You can also use the same keyboard shortcut, the Alt key with the move tool on the image itself to duplicate selected items. Now I would like to change the titles, so I will use the type tool and I will double click on this title to change uh, the text. I will call this Roman bath. I will double click on this and I will call that River Avon. Now, as you can see in the layers panel, it becomes a bit more complicated after a while to find what you are searching for if you have more and more layers created. So, as I said, it's always good to organize your layers into groups. So I will select River Avon and its background and also the photograph together by control or command clicking on them. And then I will use the keyboard shortcut control or command G. And that will create a new group and I will call that River Avon. Then I select the Roman bath photograph and the other two layers which I use for the description. I use the same keyboard shortcut command G to create the group and I will call this Roman bath. So now I have three groups and I can use my move tool for changing their position. And I can always expand or collapse them by using these little arrows. Because I'm not using overlap between these photographs, I don't really need to take care which one is on top and which one is below the others. But I can use a layer style to add an edge to each of the photographs and I can even apply a drop shadow effect on them to make it more realistic. To do that I will start doing it on the Stonehenge photograph. So I go to Stonehenge group and I double click on this photograph, the layer double click on it to get the layer styles options and I will choose stroke. Make sure that you not only check stroke but also click on the name stroke to have the additional options here on the right. I choose a white color and I choose position inside and I increase the size a little bit 
to have a frame like this, as you can see in the background. And I would like to also apply drop shadow, so I select drop shadow. I also click on drop shadow to have the additional options for that effect. But the easiest way to change the shadow, the position of the shadow, is to actually click on the image while you are in the layer styles dialog box and move the shadow around like this. I will use a shadow like this, just a very slight shadow on the edges, and I click on OK. Now you will see we have a drop shadow and the stroke effect applied to this layer. It is represented also with this FX icon. And if you want to duplicate or reuse this effect on another layer, you can easily do that by first search for that layer. So I would like to use this on River Avon layer. And then Alt click and drag the FX icon from the original Stonehenge photograph to River Avon photograph. And as you can see, now we apply the same effect there. If I also want to do this with the other image on the left, I need to first find that layer and then I alt click on the FX icon, drag and drop it onto that layer. Now you can see why it's good to have everything organized in the layers panel. To collapse all the layer groups together, you can use command or control click on the arrow. So this is a quick overview of the layers panel and how to work with layers. You can practice this with the PSD exercise file and try to always keep your layers panel clear by naming your layers and grouping them. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you've learned some useful techniques. And in the next episode, we are going to learn more about blending layers together. So if you found this tutorial interesting, I'm sure you will find that one even more interesting. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.